So, welcome back. In the previous class, we introduced the notion of a semi group T T and its generator A. We obtain some simple properties uh, of T T as well as this generator A. So, in particular, so let me again repeat that. So, A is a densely defined closed operator. Okay. So, we already also saw uh, given a semi group, we already have a solution of the abstract Cauchy problem. So, before we proceed further, it is always better to have some concrete examples. <coughs> okay, so, this. So, in the examples, I will not do all the details. So, I define the semi group. So, you have to verify that it is indeed a semi group. So, you have to verify the two properties uh, in the definition and find its generator. Okay. So, the first one is just literally L 2. Okay. So, x in L 2 I denote it by. So, it is a sequence x 1, x 2, etcetera. So, squares you can even take L p. So, there is no problem. Okay. So, define t of t this is from L 2 to L 2. So, we have to define by t of t x again this is going to be a sequence. So, I have to tell what is its nth coordinate. So, this is by definition T n square e to the minus T n square x. So, n equal to 1 2 etcetera. Okay. So, verify that T t is indeed a semi group. is a semi group and find its generator. Okay, so, we also see uh, is this a group. Okay, so, that also you, so whenever a semi group is given, you should also verify whether it is in a semi group or a group, e this a group. Okay, so, that is okay. so this is a simple one. Okay. The next one is the function space. So, here x is either u c b, I will define what this is r plus r plus is 0 infinity the positive real axis or the L p ok. So, this one let me define this. So, this is set of all uh, f from r plus that is 0 infinity either r or c f uniformly continuous that is u c and bounded.
and this is equipped with supna. Okay, so, you can verify that is a Banach space, okay. X is a, this U C B is also Banach space, and these are usual uh, the Lebesgue class, okay. And on this uh, space X, so we now we are going to define semi group of left translations. So, T T. So, T T of f, f is in x. So, again that is a function. So, I just define this is to f of x plus T. So, this is for x bigger than equal to 0 and T is also bigger than equal to 0. Okay. So, we can also consider instead of r plus the entire real line and in that case uh, this t t is defined for all t in r. So, we get group of translations both left and right. Okay. So, we, as you take t positive or t negative. Okay. So, let me just concentrate on this thing. Okay. So, verify this t t is a semi. So, let me just mention here that uh, for if x equal to u c b, the strong continuity follows from follows from uh, uniform continuity, because in this space the elements are uniformly continuous. Okay. So, if x is L p r plus the strong continuity follows from follows from the continuity in the norm. So, you see So, you are going to use all the tools developed in analysis <coughs> uh, in the first part of this course, okay. so, but work out the details, okay. write down the definition of the strong continuity and see that uh, <coughs> the properties of the functions in this respective spaces are used very much. Okay. And as far as the generator is concerned, Okay, so, let briefly and this is how uh, you guess the form of the generator in general and try and then try to prove it rigorously. Okay. So, if f belongs to x either u c b or l p. So, for the generator we want this limit now they are functions. So, I have to as t uh, this limit as t tends to 0 should exist then that particular f belongs to the generator. Okay. But now, so this should converge in the respective norm of this x. So, either uh, in the sup norm or in the LP norm. Okay. So, but that 
already gives us a clue that uh, for f to be in d a this f prime ok let me just write here should exist and f prime should belong to again x then only you can define that ok. For as uniformly continuous functions, so we can expect this to be classical uh, derivative and that again should be uniformly continuous and bounded, but for uh, LP functions, so we should consider this only in the big sense right. So, expect expect ok. So, this <coughs> for x in u c b r plus this d a is going to be set of all f in x ok and f is uh, Okay. differentiable and f prime is also ok. So, this for x in L p so again this d a f in x, but now this f prime exists only uh, exists in the weak sense in the weak sense and of course, uh, f prime should belong to x ok. So, for the both spaces we can write this uh, in a unified way. So, define d. So, either x is u c b r plus or l p r plus. So, f is in x f is a c log I will again define what this is and f prime x ok. So, this is the space of locally absolutely continuous functions. So, that means, this f is absolutely continuous on every finite interval of r plus and then by a theorem of Lebesgue, it follows that f prime exists almost everywhere and we require that f prime is also uh, in x either u c b or in l p. So, let me make a comment here. So, uh, we have defined the Sobolo spaces just side remark okay. uh, for. <coughs> so, here I am taking uh, this. So, we have defined this W 1 P omega in general, but so, you have this is f in L p in R plus such that the weak derivative 
or the in the sense of dis, uh, distributions v derivative f prime is also in L p. For this special case of uh, <coughs> the real line, okay, so this will not work in higher dimensions, this is same as f is in L p r plus f is locally absolutely continuous and f prime belongs to again L p r plus. Okay, so, verify this. Okay. So, this you might not have done it. So, this uh, this space d we have defined for at least the class of L p, it coincides with w 1 p. Okay. And now, you verify that. So, verify, verify. So, the generator A for the left translation semi group okay, is defined by this d A is equal to d. Okay. So, this is the d okay. and A is defined by f equal to f. Okay. So, this is uh, <coughs> so we have that semi group of the left translations and its generation generator is given by the derivative. So, one more example. So, let me this. So, this is bit hard. So, this is Poisson kernel. So, in a way it is a cousin of the heat kernel. Okay. So, again this is in R. Okay. So, we are <coughs> uh, so P for Poisson. So, you consider this. Uh, let me just Okay, write it 1 by pi uh, t by uh, t square plus x square. So, t is positive and x is in R. So, it is a nice function, but it is not in the Swaz class. So, in fact, uh, let me just write that. So, P t. Uh, so, since we are working in L 2 here, so it is Fourier transform that you need is given by, let me just say, uh, e to the minus t mod j. T again T positive. Okay, just verify that. So, what is the semi group? So, define T T from L2 R into L2. So, for the verif this is a hard problem, okay, but very interesting one and you learn lots of analysis. So, you can make full use of Fourier transform techniques by uh, T T. So, I take an F here. So, this is convolution of P T. So, let me write that at least once 1 by pi or t 
by so t also we can take out so this is integral over r uh, f of y divided by t square plus x minus y square d by okay so this is what t positive okay and you define this t0 of f equal to f okay so this f is in l Even if this semi group property is not immediately clear, but I just uh, we can use since it is a convolution, so we can use the Fourier transform to see that uh, the semi group property when that is not immediate, right? Semi group property. follows by taking Fourier transfer. Okay, so, this uh, T of T 1, T of T 2 F, okay, so, this is T of T 1 this is p t 2 star f and then we have this p t 1 uh, star p t 2 star f and you use associativity And now you use the Fourier transform of P t I stated. So, just to conclude that this is by taking Fourier transform. So, for if you take Fourier transform, it will be product of the Fourier transforms and again you take the inverse portion. So, you do get this and that is just T of T 1 plus T 2. So, again for the strong continuity, you use strong continuity uh, follows. Of course, you have to work out, I simply say it follows from the uh, continuity in the norm. Now, a brief discussion in the remaining time, a brief discussion about the generator. Okay. Generator. So, what we have to look for this T T f minus f by T. So, you have to consider limit So, that is a convolution of course, you can do like that, but we can use the Fourier transform. This is for just guessing and then you have to really uh, prove it rigorously. Okay. So, taking Fourier transform, so T, so this is just T inverse T T f hat minus f. So, that gives us T inverse. So, this is P T star F. So, when I take the Fourier transform, it will be product of P T hat and F hat. So, let me write that P T hat F hat minus F hat. So, this is T inverse 
e to the minus t uh, mod j mod j this is minus 1 f ok so p t hat is e to the minus t and for <coughs> just formally this what is the as t goes to 0 what happens to this this goes to so this is if you I write as 1 minus t mod j. So, you get minus mod j. Okay. So, you expect you expect. So, let me again write j. So, d a so, now everything in terms of the Fourier transform. Okay. So, this f in L 2 R n, L 2 R not R n that either minus or plus is that okay, that mod f hat is also in L 2. Right. And the form of a f again in terms of Fourier transform we just get this minus mod j f hat j. And what is this operator? What is this operator? So, let me just of course, you have to make your all the arguments rigorous here. But at least we can guess the form of the generator. Okay, that's for, that is the first important step, and then you try to prove that all the computations are valid. Okay, so this let me just mention that's an important operator. So Hilbert transform. So you see. Uh, lots of analysis coming to play. So, this I am not going to again uh, define it in. So, it is in fact, it is a singular uh, integral operator. So, again let me define in terms of defined in using Fourier transform. Okay, so, you can dig the literature if you are interested in <coughs> uh, very nice properties of Hilbert transform that is in one dimension. Higher dimensions this theory is developed by Ries and they are called Ries transformations. Okay, so, this is H f H for Hilbert. So, again defined by. Uh, so, let me write that h of j minus i sin of j f hat j. So, if you <coughs> define this h uh, without the Fourier transform, it is I will just write that convolution with this uh, singular function which we have studied in detail in uh, the first part of this course. So, this is so you have to uh, take convolution with this function okay. and then when you transform uh, using Fourier transform you get that. Okay. So, this uh, generator is expressed in terms of the Hilbert transform generator. So, let me just write that. So, a f is equal to. So, let me just write what is that minus h f.
So, you can so if you write this abstract Cauchy problem with this generator A. So, d u by d t is equal to a u and now you see this a u prime. So, it is in some sense second order, but in a singular way. So, it is not uh, as nice as the Laplacian. So, the semi group theory uh, can also handle singular equations. So, that is an important observation through this example. So, if you are interested you can uh, look into the literature uh, regarding this Hilbert transform and other properties. Okay. So, work out all these uh, four examples uh, in order to get familiarized with the this new concepts uh, semi group and its generator. And in the next class, we will continue this discussion and with some more properties of the generator and then we will go to Hilde Vishida theorem. Thank you.